Hey, it's Sue Rodman, Field Trips with Sue, and you're going on a field trip to, with Sue today. We are actually in Atlanta, but we're going to have Oxford, Mississippi here, and I am at the preserving place here in Atlanta, in, in Midtown Atlanta, and we've got Elizabeth, who is the debutante farmer, and she's actually starting her presentation, so I'm going to kind of turn it around and let you see the chef demonstration that she's doing here tonight for you, and a lot of her things that she makes are sold here at the preserving place, which is right off of 14th Street in Midtown. So I'm going to turn you all around and let you see this great demonstration as well. If I get it to turn around. <laughs> There we go. This is the preserving place right here, and Elizabeth put together a great little kind of Old Miss tailgate for us, including bacon-wrapped breadsticks, which were totally yummy. So you can hear here. I'm going to be quiet and let Elizabeth talk and show you. And he said, you know, he's got a farm down in Louisiana called Cubby Rise. They grow a lot of vegetables. I said, yeah, I've heard, I've heard. And he said, he's got another property in Oxford, Mississippi. And um, he wants us to move there and start growing vegetables. And you can help sell the vegetables. I'll grow the vegetables. And he, he just kept going on and on. <laughs> well, right after he said Oxford, my whole brain just shut down. I didn't hear anything else past Oxford. Because... Well, there are a lot of reasons, but number one, I went to Mississippi State. That would be the first <laughs> Number two, I'm claustrophobic. I lived in the Delta. Everything was flat. I could see. I could see for miles and miles and miles. Oxford's got hills. I mean, they got up, down hills all over the place. I knew I'd get stuck in between two of those hills, and honey, that was going to be it. I was going to have a panic attack and be over. Um, but anyway, so he, he kept talking about it, talking about it, he wouldn't hunt. So finally I said, okay, we'll go. We'll move to Oxford. I mean, we'll go look at Oxford. So we drove over and we um, got into Oxford and he took me around the square one time. Then we went out onto the farm and, you know, the hills, they weren't really steep hills. They were more kind of like rolling hills. And then the farm had a couple of lakes. And at the back of the farm, there was this house. And when you squinted, it looked like tar. And I mean, I died. I just died. So we sat there for a few minutes and looked over the farm. At this point, it was just a cow pasture. Um, it wasn't anything else. It was a house and, and just some, some land. So we went down to Louisiana to see our partner um, and look at his operation down there. And he started pulling vegetables out of the ground, things that I had only seen in magazines, things that I'd only seen, you know, in fancy places like Atlanta. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. not... Nothing there in, in Mississippi. Gorgeous Easter egg radish, radishes and, and tiny chioga beets and, and, oh my God, baby purple carrots. And I mean, he had me at the baby purple carrots and I just died. And so I said, okay, that's it. We're going to sell, we're going to sell our house. Um, we're going to move to Oxford. And um, so when we started the farm, it was, uh, the, the plan was, I, Luke was going to grow the vegetables, I was going to sell the vegetables. I was a chef. I had really great chef friends in Oxford. Great chef friends in Memphis, um, you know, and that, that's kind of how this was all going to go. And so we have three girls, like I mentioned, so they were trying to get through school. Luke immediately went to Oxford to start putting in irrigation, laying out plots, and, and getting everything together. And so um, we were, you hadn't seen him probably in about a month. And um, our first crops were just starting to come in. All the tiny baby lettuces, those gorgeous, you know, new baby radishes. And so it was going to be my first time, you know, to come and um, collect the vegetables, put them on the van, and, and go up to Memphis. And so, um, anyway, so we, we go through this whole process, and he says, um, you know, Elizabeth, tomorrow morning, you know, you need to get up really, really early. You need to leave about 4 o'clock in the morning. you got to get over here by 6. you got to, you know, all this stuff. So, yes, that's great. That's perfect. And so, in the meantime, my best friend Cordelia called, and um, she said, Elizabeth, you will not believe what they are doing down at the beauty parlor. Well, she knows me well. She's known me all my life, and she knows that I'm obsessed with long eyelashes more than anything on the planet. I am obsessed. I always have been since I was a child with long eyelashes. And um, anyway, so she said, honey, they are doing eyelash extenders. I said, sign me up. Sign me up. I called, and I said, y'all, I don't care. I have an appointment. I haven't seen Luke in a month. 
He's going to love these eyelashes. I said, I don't care if y'all see them. I don't care if you use hot glue. I don't give a damn how you get them on. I must have them. So I go, and I, I promise I'm going somewhere with this story. It does end somewhere besides just the eyelashes. So I get my eyelashes on. I'm so excited. And then um, they handed me a mirror to look at it. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, no, you go to the Walmart, you pick up a pillow, or you pick up something new, and you bring that pillow home and you put it on your couch, and you never noticed how nasty the couch was until you put something new on it, you know? Now all of a sudden the couch looks like hell. The couch was fine before you put the new pillow on it. Well, that was the same thing with these eyelashes. I mean, I, I mean the face was fine until the eyelashes came. So I'm looking down and I thought, oh God, well, let's just, let me get my hair blown out. So they blow out my hair and everybody knows I hadn't seen Luke in a month. You know, we're just getting all excited. First day of vegetables, you know. So we get the hair all blown out and then somebody came around and she said, you know what we do too now? And I said, what? She said, honey, we do spray tans. I said, Lord, sign me up. Let's go. Spray me down. So I get all sprayed down and get my nails done, get my toes done. Um, and I mean, I leave that place puffed up like a chicken. It was fabulous. So I leave, and then the next morning I wake up at four, I head, head to the farm, and I'm so excited. Well, half of our brand new crew did not show up that morning, so instead of sort of watching them harvest the vegetables, it was there was a lot of me actually harvesting the vegetables, and I'm in the fields, and, and um, you know, at first I'm thinking, this is really, you know, this is fabulous, this is, I mean, I'm getting it, I am picking these vegetables, you know, I am farming. And um, so I'm picking, 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 and all of a sudden these rain clouds start coming in. And I'm talking the biggest, the blackest rain clouds you have ever seen in your entire life. And I'm sure you all don't know a damn thing about eyelash extensions. But they cannot get wet for a good 48 hours. So I'm in there, and I mean, I am picking, and I'm picking, and I'm picking, and I'm picking, and I'm picking, and I don't know any Spanish at this point. And, and I start screaming, Andale, 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 come on, we've got to go, we have to go, we have to go. And so we're picking, and all of a sudden, I mean, just, it is a deluge. I mean, and my hands are covered because I kept picking because I wanted to be a team player. And my hands are literally covered in mud. I'm wallowing. My eyelashes are all down my face. I, they're all in my mouth. I can't get them out because I've got mud all over my hands. I look down my spray tan, honey. I'm just variegated. Like a damn variegated zucchini. I'm striped. And, and my hair is ruined. And I've got mud lodged under my fingernails that I know is never going to come out. And um, anyway, so I start just flailing, and then I fall, and then of course I just start crying, and cannot get up to save my life, and Luke finally comes over, and he's not the most sympathetic, not sympathetic at all, and he looked at me, and he said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and like, I, I couldn't fit, I mean, there were so many things, there were so many things at that point, and I said, Luke, I said, we have made a great mistake, honey, I said, I'm, I'm a Debbie Doc from the Mississippi Delta, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a farmer to go home. And he said, I don't think you understand. He said, we've sold our home and we bought a big tractor and we are here and you need to get yourself together. And um, at that point, I uh, finally got, I got myself up and washed myself off in the hose and um, we loaded up the vegetables and I went on to Memphis. Um, and it took about a year for me to adjust to Oxford from the Mississippi Delta. It literally took me a year. Um, Oxford is very sophisticated. Um, Oxford is, it's a very smart town, and I'm not saying that the Delta isn't, but it's just very different um, from what I was used to. And I would sit on the front porch and I would just cry, and Luke would say, you would think that I moved you to Mexico. Do you understand we are still in the same zip code? <laughs> I mean, in the same area code. You know, I'd say, yes, yes, yes. And anyway, but then all of a sudden it was just like a light bulb went off. And I absolutely have come to fall in love with everything that is Oxford. It's done things for me that I could have never, ever imagined, mainly with the vegetables. That was the thing, was that I went to these restaurants, and they embraced me on every single level. They would buy even if they didn't need it. Even if they didn't need it, didn't really have much of a use for it, they wanted me to come back. They were excited that I was there. So much more so than even with Memphis. With some of these big name chefs that you would think, you know, would just buy huge, buy huge, buy huge. The restaurants that everybody said, oh, you have to go to this one, you have to go to that one, you know, um, they're going to buy huge. It was my Oxford clients. They were the ones that got what I was doing. They were the ones that were still connected to Mississippi and to farmland and to what was going on and what was right and true about, about cooking and about eating. Um, and the restaurant scene has continued to grow. 
It is absolutely unbelievable the restaurants that have come up and that are thriving and doing unbelievably well since we started um, selling vegetables. I happen to think it's because of our vegetables, but they may say otherwise. Um, anyway, I'm just teasing. But regardless, Oxford is an amazing place, and the restaurant scene is something that you absolutely have to come and see firsthand. You can read about it, you can hear about it, you can, you know, watch it on television, but you have got to come and experience these restaurants. You've got to walk through those doors, you've got to feel what it feels like to sit in those chairs and to eat this food and to be taken care of by some of the most amazing people, I think, in the South. Um, it is a really, really special place. So, now we're going to get to our fermented cheese, which is, I know, what you all have been all waiting for. Um, and I'm sure outside you were thinking, does she do anything else but fermented cheese? It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one of my favorite things, and, um, and I think we have a pretty good recipe, so I'm going to share that with you all. So, we shred our own cheese. I think that's crucial. I honestly think that it's one of the most important aspects of making your pimento cheese. So um, we also use, uh, we use homemade mayonnaise normally. If not, you can do Dukes, you can do Hellman's. Just get a good quality mayonnaise. Um, so we'll go ahead and add that to this. Just don't, if you're on a diet, just don't watch. Just, just do not watch. There's no need to upset yourself with it. Um, we also are going to add some pecans. This is not a, a usual recipe because I do add the pecans to it, but I love the crunch and I love the flavor. Um, when I, in the Delta, we were surrounded, our house was surrounded by pecan trees, and that was one of my favorite things is in the fall to go out and sit and pick up the pecans. Um, and so anytime I can throw a pecan in somewhere, honey, I'm going to be throwing a pecan in. We do roasted red peppers that we roast and then chop, so we'll add those. Now normally we do just a Lee and Perrins, but tonight we have some fancy, fancy, fancy. And this is from the preserving place. And it's sort of like a cross between a Wooster and a steak sauce, and it is magnificent. So um, anyway, so that's really special. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Of course, we add some very thinly sliced green onions, a little bit of Tabasco, or a lot of it, whatever you like. And, um, and then we're just going to mix this up. Now, one of the ways, we use this every way we possibly can. Um, I absolutely adore it stuffed in pickled okra. We have, you know, one of the things that I've done is become incredibly resourceful with all of the vegetables when they come in. Um, because the first year that we planted and that we started this farm, Luke went out and planted a football field of squash and 10,000 tomato plants. At that time, I think I had maybe eight or nine restaurants that were really buying from me, and they, and they weren't even buying that huge. I mean, they were buying, but not enough to support 10,000 tomato plants. And so I got incredibly creative um, with, you know, how in the world and what we were going to do with this. The first, um, first spring when, uh, when the squash came in, I had been on the vegetable van, and I was up in Memphis, and he called me, and he said, you've got to get home. And I said, Luke, I'm on the van. I'm coming you know, when I get through doing what I'm doing. He goes, no, I don't think you understand. He said, if you don't get home right now, I'm going to kill myself. So I was like, okay, fine. He's very dramatic. He's not sympathetic, and he's incredibly dramatic. <laughs> so I didn't really, I was not too terribly worried or upset. But I got home, and we have a vegetable cooler that is about the size, I guess it's about from here to that wall. So it's enormous. And he said, just look, just look. And so I couldn't get the door open. Like, I literally could not get it open. Kind of opened up this much, and so I stick my head in, and we have these black crates. You'll see one right there that I stole from the farm. I'm totally not allowed to take those, but anyway, I did anyway. Um, but so it's black crates from floor to ceiling filled with squash. I mean, it had gotten so bad we were scared to go to bed at night because when you go to bed, honey, the squash grows. <laughs> we would pick a thousand pounds. The next day there was another thousand pounds. It was the scariest thing in the entire world. I had friends, when we first moved to Oxford, everybody invited us to all kinds of fun parties. And then all of a sudden, all the invitations quit. And I said, Luke, what did you, why do you think we don't get invited anymore? He said, probably because you take a case of squash every time we go anywhere and they are sick of it. I mean, we had gotten to the point, literally, that I would go to neighbors' houses at night. I would turn my lights out. I would throw the squash out of the front steps. And then I would ease back down the driveway. Um, but anyway, so he said, you're going to have to sell it. And I said, Babe, there's no way, there's no way. In I cannot sell 5,000 pounds of squash. What? You know, he said, well, just dump it. Take it to a wholesaler. Do something. 
So I started calling the wholesalers, well, me and every other squash farmer who's trying to get rid of squash, and all calling the wholesalers. And um, so finally I get this one secretary on the phone at this, at this one place in, in Memphis. It's called Easy Way, and there was a reason for that. Um, but anyway, his, the, uh, the secretary answered, and I just started crying. I mean, I had, had it. I was at my end throat, and I said, I don't think you understand it. You don't know me, but I have three beautiful children. We moved this far, and, and, uh, and, and my husband, he's going to kill himself. And I have all this watch. <laughs> anyway, so we went through this, and she finally, she said, look, I will do everything I can to get you an appointment with Barry, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. And I thought, oh, good, this is good, Barry. I've heard about Barry. Because he apparently was one of the sexist, most horrific men in the entire world. He was just a lech. He was awful. So, honey, I went upstairs, and I put on my daughter, who's 15. I put on her tightest shorts. And, I mean, I got my tightest top on. And, honey, Mama loaded that squash up, and we went to town. And so I drove that van all the way up to Memphis. And um, once we got there, I unloaded it, and Barry was standing there. And so I started with my big prank squash. Barry, would you like some of my squash? <laughs> oh, Barry. Anyway, ended up selling all 5,000 pounds, left with a check for $8,000, and um, it was one of the best days of my entire life. <laughs> of course, the only problem was that there was another 5,000 pounds the next day. But um, anyway, we finally started. The restaurants really started picking up. And that's actually how the Bloody Mary mix was born. Um, John T. Edge, who is a wonderful friend and mentor of mine, um, he knew my tomato situation because at this point we had finally gotten the squash under control. Well, hell, then the tomatoes come in. You know, and at this point, I'm just drinking straight vodka on my porch. Honestly, I mean, that's all I'm doing. And um, so John T. said, you know, Elizabeth, he said, as much. I'm so sorry. He said, as much as you like vodka, You'd think you would take some of those tomatoes and turn it into Bloody Mary mix. Um, he said, you know, some people like to actually put stuff in their vodka. <laughs> and um, anyway, so we, uh, so he said, look, I've got this Southern Foodways event that's coming up. We're going to be in Greenwood, and um, we're going to be in a blueberry field, and I want you to serve Bloody Marys. And um, so I said, okay, great, great. I'm going to make them. I'm going to make them. I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew... Or I felt like it would use a whole bunch of tomatoes, and it does. It uses pounds and pounds. You cannot imagine how many tomatoes it uses up. So it was beautiful. I could stay drunk all day <laughs> because I do a lot of testing. And, um, and then we ended up making the debutante farmer Bloody Mary mix. And so that's sort of where it was born. It was born from that. Um, and John T. Edge is from Oxford, Mississippi. He started Southern Foodways Alliance, which... Um, I feel, and I think probably just about everybody um, that knows would agree, is the most important food organization in the United States, if not the world. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's the world. Um, and for that to be in Oxford is huge. Um, and, and that is, again, it shows there is a reason that people come to Oxford. There's a reason they write about Oxford. It's a reason they move to Oxford. Um, it's because of people like John T. and the things that they're doing and the way that they inspire people. I mean, I would have never thought to make Bloody Marys out of this. I was entirely too drunk, but he, <laughs> he told me what to do. You know what I'm saying? That is the reason. There are smart people in Oxford that have really great ideas that are happy to share. Um, and so anyway, so that's what he did for me. So that's how we started the Debutante Farmer Bloody Mary mix. Um, it did win the Southern um, Living Food Award last year. We were a little bit proud of that. I was talking to one, I was talking which food, who was I talking to earlier about being in the magazines? Oh, there you are, you're right here. Um, anyway, and I was just saying how, I'm, she said something like, you just, when you see something in print that you've done or if you're featured in something, you know, you want to like, tell people at the grocery store, you know, and I said, well, you know, some people wouldn't, but I do. You know, I like open up the bag and I'm like, oh my God, you're just, <laughs> this is that. Um, anyway, and so when that did come out, there was a whole lot of, a whole lot of that at the grocery store. And, and plus, you know, like she, she said she'll buy five stacks and hoping that somebody's going to ask. I don't wait on somebody to ask, honey. I buy my five magazines and I'm talking about it from all the way from the line. You know, I don't care. I'm like, look at me, you know, ten magazines. You wonder why I've got all these magazines. Hold on, let me tell you. <laughs> um, 
but anyway, it is, uh, it's pretty amazing. So, that's where the Bloody Mary mix came from, and now we are down to our fermented cheese. So what we did, we made, and I, I know it was time to go, okay, I'm sorry. You've got some Bloody Mary mix. Yeah, we made a fun cocktail. Yeah, do that. Yeah, it's a fun cocktail. Now do you want to try a little bit of cocktail? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 you're great. But anyway, so, um, no, I need interrupting. So we, um, we did make a cocktail for it, lightened it up with some, um, a little bit of beer, a little bit of cucumber, water, and Morgan's, what else did we do? Uh, lime oh, juice. lime juice. So anyway, it's a little lighter than one of your mix. Oh, it has, it does have vodka in it. Oh, cat head. Uh, yes. Maybe? Yes. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah, just yeah, just make one. There's a leaf. It's all right. Anyway, so um, so that. What was I saying? Okay, so we did we did sliders. So we did a slider with um that we have out there, which is a brisket burger. We grind up brisket and then we make our burgers with bacon. And then we use some of the preserving places most brilliant bread and butter relish. Absolutely unbelievable because we normally do bread and butter pickles, but the relish is so much better because you get a thin, you know what I'm yeah. talking about. You get a thin layer when you bite into it, you have half the pickle on your lip, and you know what I'm saying? Like it just, it works so much better. There's not one surface area that's missed because those pickles, which we love, you know, they're going to miss a spot. So this just makes it wonderful. Um, we also stuff them, like I think I said, with the okra, and then um, what else did we do, Morgan? Where'd you put the plain bit of pumpkin? We don't even have to decide that. We just pour it just for people to taste the plain Just the mix. mix. Yeah. Because that has like beer in it to make it. Yeah. Because we the didn't mix. Make, is incredible. That's like so. a bloody beer. What else did we do? What? There were three things. Oh, pickle. Put mini cheese in three ways. On a pickled okra, on a slider, and on a pork skin. That's right, pork skins. Okay. Anyway, so um, so that's kind of you know that's the that's the deal. Um, but um, again, I want to thank you all for coming. I cannot. I mean, anytime anybody wants to talk about Oxford, y'all just get me on the phone. If you come to Oxford, please come to the farm. There are lovely hotels in town. They are so fine and so fancy, and you will love them, love them, love them. But you've got to come out and visit me at the farm. Um, we would just be thrilled to have you all out there. We have a beautiful barn. We have a gorgeous field of flowers that we just did this year. Um, and of course we have all the vegetables that now we are finally, well we think we're in control of them. We're not really in control of them, but at least it's not thousands of pounds um, that we're having to, you know, pelt our friends with. Um, but uh, it is. It's an amazing town. Amazing, amazing town. I can't thank you all for taking time out tonight to come to this. We know how busy you are. I mean, we get it, and the fact that you all came out to be with us is a huge honor. Um, so anyway, so y'all take care. If when, not if, but when you get to Oxford, please call me. Um, go by Visit Oxford. They can send you my way, and um, I'd love to visit with you all more. So.